and welcome to another episode of the Cutting Edge Figure Skating Podcast. My name is Kim Dunaway, and in this episode, I will be covering the pairs event at the 2024 Four Continents ISU Championships. This event was very messy. Unfortunately, last year in Colorado, of course, the free skate was its own disaster because of the altitude, but the short program there was actually really good top to bottom, and it was really encouraging. And here, I felt like it did not reach those heights without the altitude problem. Obviously, you had the quick turnaround for especially the U.S. teams, but also for some of the Canadian teams as well. A lot of people said they were, you know, battling some injuries and different things like that. And so perhaps that led to the overall messiness of the event. Also, so this event was in Shanghai and China has hosted Cup of China. They hosted Grand Prix Final and now here at... Four continents. They've had multiple events in a short period of time in China. This event, not just at pairs, just overall seemed very, very low attended. Not a lot of enthusiasm for the crowd. I couldn't remember anybody in the pairs event getting a standing ovation or anything like that. I don't know. It was just kind of weird overall. And also not one team here had a program with completely positive GOE. Every single team had negative GOE in both of their programs, which reminded me very much of the 2021 Worlds in pairs, where the only team that didn't have a negative GOE was Machina and Galeama, who won Worlds that year. Literally every other team had negative GOE. And you could understand in that instance, because you were coming off of a season where we only had domestic events, a lot of countries didn't have events at all, everybody was basically really rusty. Don't really have that same excuse here, unfortunately, but... Let's get into the results. So the first place team here was Deanna Stellato Dudek and Maxine Duchamp of Canada winning their first four continents title. Their short program really was super strong, except for Max's triple toes, which looked like he landed and then just like slipped off the edge and fell. Their triple loop was very strong, which has been usually their messiest element all season. Like I've seen them at competition land beautiful throw triple loops in warm up, and then get into the actual event itself. And then two foot step out. I think she's even fallen on the triple loop in the short program also. And so it's been really inconsistent for them. And so I thought the fact that that was clean here was a huge for them because we know Max can land his triple toe. So no team got 70 plus points here, but again, Deanna and Max with a big mistake, getting nearly 70 points in that program. And we have seen a team like Hossie and Volodin skate very clean this season and not break 70. So I still think, especially with Mira and Kihara, and I'll get to them in a second, they still, to me, look like the team to beat at Worlds. It's basically theirs to lose, in my opinion. If they go out and skate clean, we've not seen anybody in that same neighborhood of scoring as what we have seen this team. It's really up to them. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened all of the time this season because at Grand Prix Final, they ended up third. So they've got to go out and skate clean. But I think they definitely have the best material of any of the top peer teams this season. And the judges are really rewarding them for the hard work that they have done in the offseason to increase their speed, increase their twist. So in their long program, Again, had some just messy things here and there. She only did a single axle on that last jump in their combination, which is meant to be a triple toe, single axle, double axle. He stepped out of his triple sal. And she had a low landing on the triple loop. So just a little bit of errors here and there that kept them from hitting the heights of 140, which we have seen them hit this season at Skate Canada. I do think that their forward outside death spiral looked better in this competition, which I have given them the blues on throughout the season because it's typically just really ugly. She was a lot lower there. I still don't love the voiceovers in this program, but this program, you know, it can be such a moment at home worlds if they really pull it together because it's, it's just so much more exciting than what most of the other top peer teams are doing. I mean, Conti and Mishi, if they even go to Worlds, they've got to skate off with their other two Italian teams at Challenge Cup later this month are, you know, recycling an old program and Hawk and Kunkel are recycling an old program. And you've got Hossi and Volodin, whose free skate is fine 
it's not super exciting. You've got Bakari and Garizi with that weird cats program. You know, Gilardi and Ambrosini probably have the most exciting free skate next to Deanna and Max, and they probably won't even be there. So they can really take it to the house and have just a real moment if if they can do this well at Worlds. Now, the interesting thing and in their free skate was that she hurt her arm on the twist. So you didn't figure that out until after the performance, as they were getting off the ice talking to their coach, she said she hurt her arm and that she had said after the fact to the press there that it was like tingling and it just really hurt really throughout the entire performance. So kudos to her. It didn't seem to bother her. Everything else was pretty, pretty good. And when I went back and looked at the replay, you could sort of see where she hit it, her hand on his head. And you, of course, those moves are just so bang, bang. So in slow motion, it may not make sense. But, you know, in real time, you can see the impact there. And that would be, you know, that would hurt. I don't think it's a long term issue. I think it probably was just like a stinger. In second place here were Mira Inkihara of Japan, reigning world champions and reigning world silver medalists before that. And once Alexa and Brandon decided to step away from competition, then they were the heir apparent who is going to challenge them this season. And unfortunately for them, they have struggled with injuries, largely with Kihara. He had a fracture in his spine And so they have been out for the majority of the season. We saw them at Autumn Classic. They were not good at Autumn Classic, where they did have a head-to-head battle with Salado and Dudek then. Salado and Dudek. Salado, Dudek, and Deschamps there. Here, I think they came in with very realistic expectations. They didn't come in expecting to blow the roof off the place. They didn't come in really necessarily even expecting to win. They were just trying to, like, get their programs out. They're also going to Challenge Cup and... Of course, they'll be at Worlds. And so I think for them, they're hoping to get, you know, just get out there today, get a little bit better in that next competition, and to be ready for Worlds. You know, I think it's it was tough to watch in this competition because Miri and Kihara have a, a habit of just having very boring programs. And so when you take even a boring program and you skate it really well, it can make the program more exciting. If you have a boring program and you don't skate it very well, then it's very, very forgettable. And so in their short program, they have this violin music. I think at the, I think in Autumn Classic, maybe they were doing to, he put a spell on you, I put a spell on you. And they were like, it's, we're, we're changing it. We don't like it. I would have liked to have seen that develop. Again, they've been out of competition. I don't know how long he was off the ice, but this just feels so, so safe. And I do think there's other programs this season that are more exciting. Not a lot of programs this season, but there are more programs this season that are more exciting. And I think they're really behind the eight ball. Now, if they come in and it whirls and skate clean, we're we're gonna have a different conversation. But here, it just made it for it very, very underwhelming. And so they had a low catch on their twist, which caused them issues. And then also Riku just did a double toe, which I'm going to pick on her a little bit because as far as I know, she wasn't injured. And so while he's off the ice, then she has nothing to practice on, but side-by-side jumps, you know, side-by-side spin that they do in the short program footwork. I mean, you can't practice your throws and your lifts and your, twist, right? So, and and again, I'm sure this is a hundred percent just a mental thing, but she has a history of even when she lands a triple toe of under rotating it. So I would have just hoped that in all of this time when she wasn't able to practice partner stunts that she would have been working on some of her singles. And I don't know that that didn't happen. Just, we didn't have it see the fruit. We didn't see the fruits of it in this competition for sure. And she did the same thing in the free skate. She did a double toe, single axle, double axle combo. And that for them last year was a big contributor to them winning worlds that triple toe, double axle, double axle. And, you know, they may need it at world depends on how everybody else does, but obviously lost a lot of points there. He did put his hand down on a triple Salcal. She also got a cue Their throw triple Lutz was great, but then fell on the triple loop on the triple loop throw. And then this is like French music, like by Celine Dion, which like a lot of teams have been picking French music this year because it's going to be in Montreal and they're obviously trying to play to the crowd a little bit. I feel like you could just mute this, put on last year's music, 
and it would just be the same. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to pick on them too much for a lot of their elements outside of like the side by side elements on hers, because I feel like, again, she's had time to sort of clean these things up, but I expect that they'll be a little bit better at challenge gump. And I don't know what we're going to see from them at worlds. I think with the unpredictability of worlds in general, they're absolutely going to be in the conversation and on paper on their best day, they are definitely the best team in the world. I just don't know if we're going to be able to see it this year or not. All right, moving on to the third place team here, which was maybe a little bit of a surprise. It was Ellie Cam and Danny O'Shea of the U S they started out in fourth place in the short program. Their side-by-side -side jumps were really good. I mean, nice unison, you could see him talking to her before their throw triple loop. And of course it was yet another fall. And I was wondering as I was watching them, I was like, you know, the Chinese pairs will often start with their side-by-side -side jump because that for them is their hardest element. They just want to go ahead and get it out of the way. Whereas every other team tends to start with a twist. I wonder if there isn't some wisdom with Danny and Ellie and it probably isn't something that they could do this season, but like, should they start off their program in the short program with a throw? And just like get it out of the way, you know, like before, like she can think about it too much before nurse and get out of the way too much. Like just go ahead and do it and get it over with. If that wouldn't be a better strategy for them to take some of that Chinese pair strategy, if we're going to do the element that we struggle with the most first, they've got to do something because it's just, it's just not working. And they've improved so many other places. I mean, her side by side jumps are so much better than they were last year in the long program. She, Landed both of those, throw triple toe and th that throw Salcow, one of them in combination. And I'm like, okay, whoever her jump coach is, can we send Valentina to that jump coach, Valentina Plaza, and can we send Chelsea Lou there? Because I, I was so discouraged watching them last year and thinking if she can't do a double axle side by side and she's not able to land this triple consistently, like there's no way they're going to do two side by side triple jumps. And frankly, at the last two competitions, they've they've been able to do those elements quite well. And so I don't know what they have done there. And maybe they can take that same bit of energy and apply it to their throws because it's so, so discouraging. Now, in the long program, that throw triple loop was almost there. It was a low landing and she had to put her free leg down to save it, but it wasn't a fall. And so it was as close as they have come to landing it in competition. And of course they fell on the throw sal cow. So they had in general, the best lift scores in the entire competition. That group three lift that they do is just fantastic. And Danny looks so comfortable at the bottom of a lift. So when people look at it and they're like, how on earth did Cam and O'Shea get on the podium? Well, it was a very messy event in general, but it's, it's the other elements in their program. And thank goodness they're landing the side-by-side -side jumps because if they weren't landing those and obviously they wouldn't be there. So the throws is, is something that I, I I hope that they can figure out and fix. It looks to me like they must go better in practice than they do in competition. But even though when I saw them at U.S. Nationals in practice and when I've seen them in warmups, they really haven't gone better. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with them going forward. But I think we were hopefully most of us encouraged by what we saw from them here versus what they did at Nationals just last weekend. That was really rather disappointing in winning the title there. Fourth place here was Golubeva and Geotopolis Moore of Australia. And they had such a strong free skate. It was the short program that really sort of did them in. They were seventh in the short program. So they all had almost a disaster on the triple twist. Very, very low catch. Their side-by-side -side triple toes were amazing. Like I've been giving Leah and Trent kudos all year for the unison on their side-by-side -side triples. But I don't know, like... Golubeva and Geotopolis more like they they might be better like Anastasia and Hector their side by side jumps in general are so strong but I just love the unison on them more than anything and then she fell on the throw triple loop which was the real world problem in the short program in the long program love their their music choice to Umbrellas of Sherberg again a bit of an issue on that twist low height on the twist and a low catch other than that everything else was so, so good. Triple act, the triple axle. Okay, no, they're not doing side-by-side -side triple axles. Triple toe, double axle, double axle combo. Love that entry they do into their throw. Sal Cow, they had the best tech score of the event, but they were six in PCS, which is fair. 
young team. This is only this is their first full year in seniors. I mean, we saw them at four continents last year and at Worlds last year, but they spent the entire fall in juniors. So I think that they're exactly where you would expect a team that's a brand new senior team to be in terms of that second mark. Their group five lift is a bit weird to me in the way that she shifts her foot into into position. And I feel like the lifts are for them the weakest part of their skating. But the fact that they have such good technical elements in their side-by-side jumps, if they can continue to work on their twist, which is a real issue for them here, continue to cultivate the lifts, then they can be a, a real a real team to contend with, for sure. All right, fifth place here was Leah Pereira and Trent Mouchot of Canada. And I think that this was definitely a disappointment for them, for a team that won a Grand Prix, was second in another, made Grand Prix final. The last three competitions for them have just been really disappointing. Grand Prix final, Canadian Nationals, and now here. In the short program, I got a really good look at the at the new short program because Canadian Nationals, like the music was really, I mean, not the music, the, the lighting was really bad. And so here I got a much better look at it. And for what I could see, I meant to look at the two programs side by side and I haven't. I didn't really see that there was a real choreography change. I mean, to me, it just looks like they changed the the music, you know, halfway in the first half of the program. I, I So I'm not really sure what a music change was supposed to do if they didn't really change the choreography. Like the judges are supposed to award them more higher scores on their second mark because the music is uh, slower. Like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me unless maybe... I don't know. I mean, if you're going slower to match it, well, that affects your speed. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. And even like her outfit, which has changed. She's now in this like Navy skating dress. I feel like that mutes her a little bit. And I feel like that the previous con costume, like she stood out more like with a lighter blue. So I don't know. I don't really get it. They do make an effort to look at each other like in the beginning, but that goes away pretty quickly once they get into their technical elements. Again, they have great side-by-side triple toes in that short program. A really bad fall on their throw loops. So it was like, what has gone awry with their with their throws all of a sudden? And I thought the music change going into the side by side spins was good, and their synchronicity was good until they changed foot, and then Trent was a little bit off. And I thought in the lift, the change of position was a little slow, and so Leah was really dejected at their score because uh, it was sub sixty. And I mean, even at their best, they really haven't been able to score like over like sixty five. And they've really been trying to work on that all season, which maybe was the part of the the costume change and the music change, which I don't think it's going to do what they wanted it to do. But even so, because the event was so messy, even even though they were six in the short program, and you know had a sub sixty score, they were only like a couple of points out of third place. And all of those teams, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, were all very shaky coming into the free skate. And so they certainly could have blown the roof off the place and the free skate and made it all the way up into the podium. But unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen either. So we found out here that Trent has been dealing with some injuries and he sustained a back injury the day that they got back from Worlds. They weren't sure if they were going to be here at all. And so that definitely affected his ability to do some of the side-by-side jumps because usually they're doing the triple toe, double axle, double axle. Now it hasn't gone well all the time, but he bailed on both of the double axles and just did singles. And then instead of doing side-by-side triple sow cows like they have done all season, they just did side-by-side double loops here. They also had an issue on their last lift. They've had an issue on this another time. It also happened to them at Grand Prix Finals. They just got a level one here, which again, might be part of the back injury. I mean, that's really where you use that back as in those lifts. And this is the last lift in the program when you're the most tired. So, but between the two missed double axles, the side-by-side double and the lift issue, that was about 10 points that they missed. They were five points from third and eight points from second. So it's definitely there for them. Hopefully they can get back home and and get well. Again, I question if you're injured, should you even be here? Like, what are you gaining by being here and skating injured? Like, I don't know. But hopefully they can heal up, work on some of these things because their twists, not their twists, their lifts were great in the long program. That's something that we've seen them struggle with the last couple of competitions also. And I would love to see them back to what we saw them at in the Grand Prix at Worlds. Still think that their material this year is is weak and it's it's not helping them any. But obviously, 
like I mentioned with Mira and Kihara, when you have weaker content and you don't skate as well, it's even more underwhelming. And sixth place here was Ping and Wang of China. And in the short program, much improved from what we saw them in the Grand Prix. They were really having issues on a lot of their levels in their step sequences and in their death spiral. And here they got level fours on everything except their lift, which definitely need to work on that. And their twist is still very low. And that might be something that they don't have time to really work on until the off season. But in general, it was really good. I could see just a great performance quality out of her. She's just trying to project to the audience. And of course, they have beautiful throws. All the Chinese peers here had just fantastic quality throws. Her PCS are just too low. Like, I just I just don't get it. Like, I, I get that they're skating early in all of their competitions because they don't have any world standing points. And, you know, skate order is determined by world standing points. But like, I think they got a, let me look it up right quick. I think they got like a 27 in PCS in the short program. Yeah, just shy of 28. Seventh in program components, even though they were fifth in the short program. Like, I don't, I I just, I don't get it. I think they should be way closer to 30. Everything they're doing to me is, is very high quality. It's not a, it's not a bare bones program. Like, I I just don't get it. And the long program, unfortunately, they had a a lot of issues with the side-by-side jump. So where he fell on the triple toe in the short program, she fell on the triple toe in the long program. And then they do it. They did at least put those double sale cows in combination because they've tried to do triple toe, double toes for in a cup of China and at NHK, I believe. And they didn't work out really well because one, one partner was always messing up on the triple toe. So they have now put a double toe on the end of their double sale cow. And she managed to put her hands down on the double toe and get a cue call on a double. So at least they put the combo in there. It's better. It Negative GOE, a little bit negative GOE is probably better than a repetition 30% below the base value. But still, like, can we not, we, can we not do a double toe? Do we need to go down to a single toe? Like this, it's so, it's so unfortunate. I mean, this has been an issue for her for years with a side-by-side, you know, double sow cows that she's been doing. Like I said earlier in the season, like this is, she's like pioneered the double sow cows and now everybody does it. Their, their throws are so fantastic. I mean, both their triple loop and their sow cow were good. Their lifts are all very good. And they had the highest GOE in the entire competition. So, you know, just what brought them down was those, those pesky side-by-side jumps because they're, everything else is a quality for them to be on podiums at, at these events. They just need, need, need some work on those side-by-side jumps. And two, they still really need to work on the twist. I mean, at one point, like Chinese pairs had all had fantastic twists. If you think about going all the way back to like Jin and Zhao, like I think maybe that they, did they used to go to Russia to, or did somebody from Russia come and help them with their twist? I can't remember exactly. Um, maybe not Russia, but you know, can, can you go somewhere else? <laughs> can you get, bring somebody else in, you know, to help them with their twist? I think all the Chinese, uh, all the Chinese pairs could use some help in that department too. All right. And seventh place here was Chelsea Liu in Village Nage of the U.S. Very, very different competition for them in terms of the short program versus the long program. In the short program, they were third. I, I really love the music they use in the short program. It's kind of jazzy. Chelsea looked so much more joyful and so much less stressed at this competition than she did last week. Last week, she just never looked comfortable. She just, you know, you just couldn't see it in the face. You could see it in the practices, but once the competition lights were on, it was like she sort of checked out a little bit to me. And the only thing in their short program was, of course, the triple sal. What she didn't fall, at least, she put her hands down, so it was better than a fall, but it was the same kind of issue that we've been seeing all season. And their side by side spins were also a little bit off. Um, but Village looks just so strong underneath all of their lifts. Again, of course, they have a fantastic twist. Even though they don't get a level four on their twist, um, they get so much GOE on their level three twist that they usually have one of the best twist scores in the competition. In the long program, he just spun out of his triple south class. I think feel like that's the first time we've really seen him not do well on the triple south core. Of course, she fell on it there. And then they do a double sow cow, double axle. I think they need something kind of like Chan and Hal, like maybe like a double sow cow, double axle, double axle, like adding a second one in. And I know her double axles are not consistent either, but they just lose so many points on those side-by-side jumps. They need some kind of a strategy. She also two-fitted the triple loop, which is also an issue for them. Their throws are not consistent. 
And even when they, they do land them, they're not super confident like you see with a lot of other pairs. But again, she's smiling the whole time in this in this program, which made me very happy. They did land the throw sow cow. And then she fell after it. It was so bizarre. Like she had it. It was like, you see that sometimes with the throws. It always reminds me of Jen and Zhao from the Olympics with that quad sow. It's like, oh, she's got it. Oh, no, she doesn't. Now here, she didn't fall on the throw sow cow. She landed the sow cow. And she got credit for for landing it. She fell coming out of it, like as a tra- like on the transition. So, um, but it was it was just such a bizarre fall. Um, they also got a V on their spin, and then Chris, who did the commentary for this, like he did for Europeans, it says after they get their scores, they drop like a stone after that performance. I thought eh, that's a little harsh. Eh, a little harsh. Yes, it was. You know they. 113 points in the free skate, which was far away from the 120s that everybody ahead of them was getting. But, you know, I thought it was a little harsh. I thought in general, there were some things that were a little bit better here than was at Nationals. But as a whole, I think that they've had, you know, a lot of positives in this first season together. They obviously won't be going to Worlds because Plazas and Fernandez got that nod after beating them at Nationals. But I think that they can certainly, if they can figure out some kind of strategy on her side-by-side jumps, they can certainly at least be in the conversation for medals at U.S. Nationals. I don't know if they have enough for for medals at, at international competitions if it's not something that they can, if they can't work on, like I said, something with those side-by-side jumps. I think with them, Ping and Wang, maybe even a team like Plaza and Fernandez, they would all like really, really benefit from the ISU making a decision to just go down to one side-by-side jump for pairs. It's not going to happen. I think they are looking at getting rid of one lift, which I don't love, you know, but, but, but putting some type of a choreographic element there, you know, like a choreographic spin or something like that to get, to give them a little bit more variance sort of in the, in the free skate. But I don't know. I think, I think I might like just one side by side jump instead, and then having an extra choreographic element instead of getting rid of one of the lifts. But at least they're going to hopefully try to do something with pairs to change something because it's been, it's the discipline that we see by far the most same samey content. But I think for if if they were to do something like that, it would really benefit a team like Chelsea and Balaz, where you have one partner who just really, really, really struggles with side by side jumps. And while I'm on the subject, I know something else people really want to see are increases in the valuation of quad elements in pairs, quad throws, quad twist. And my issue with that is we have so many teams that don't do either of those elements very well. A lot of low catches on twist, another revolution isn't going to be safe. And same thing with a quad throw. We have so many teams that really struggle on landing the triple throws. How are they going to do with landing a quad? Now, I would love to see it. We haven't seen a quad throw since Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford did it in 2018. So, of course, we got a quad twist last Olympics with Sui and Han, but it's just not something that we see very much of because it's a lot of times for teams not worth the risk with the valuation. And so if you increase the value, then perhaps more teams would attempt it. But just looking at the current state of pairs, I'm not sure that I could make a valid argument for raising the values right now until the elements greatly improve on the triples that we have. All right, so that was quite the rabbit trail. <laughs> Let me pull it back to the results here and finish up. So in eighth place was Kellyanne Lauren and Lucas ETA of Canada, and they had a real moment at Canadian Nationals, but unfortunately for them, couldn't really replicate it here. In the short program, she spun out of her triple sow cow. Felt like with their lift, the revolutions just looked really slow. The throw looked like it was two footed to me, but somehow it ended up with positive GOE. I just felt like in general, with this short program for them, the music just feels like it needs more speed. Everything just feels a little bit slow. Their side-by-side spins were off to end the program and their ending pose was off. Like she went into her ending pose before he did. I don't think that's ever like a good look right as the program ends. And then in the long program, 
they really were doing so well, just like a walkie landing on her triple sow again, but then they had a fall on their throw triple sow cow at the end of their program, which was a real bummer. So while they finished seventh in the free skate, they couldn't pull up enough out of eighth and stayed there. In ninth place was Plazas and Fernandez of the U.S. And they're coming off of the best finish at U.S. Nationals in their career. They were third there and were named to the world team. And unfortunately for them here, just a real step back and just kind of an unfortunate set of skates. Again, it's hard for a lot of teams to make this U.S. Nationals, four continents, two major competitions, two weeks back to back. And you felt like the ice dancers had a little bit more time to prepare because their competition didn't start until Thursday. But pairs, women's, and men all started on Wednesday. So just an incredible turnaround to finish a competition on Saturday or Sunday for these American competitors fly like 22 hours, multiple time zones and compete here. And so I really felt like of all of the competitors, they had the worst time. Now, again, it's, it's not in a performance that is somehow uncharacteristic of them, (laughs) unfortunately, but in their short program, Valentina once again fell on her triple toe. And I'm just like, what else can they do? You know, can they do side by side, double axles? Like we've seen, Gilardi and Ambrosini do at their last couple competitions just to try to get her to stay on her feet. You know, what can they do? Because it's just such a problem. Also had the foot down on the triple loop. Both of their, you know, jumping elements are just not ever consistent. And I kind of feel like for them, like I do with Ellie's throws, I'm just like, have I ever even seen Valentina land a clean triple? I don't know. And then in the long program, you know, it started really well and it ended really well if you, the middle was just a mess. So they have, um, in my opinion, at this point, the better Top Gun program. Okay, we'll talk about the other team when I get to the Ice Dance episode. But, you know, they have a really great twist. They usually get a level four on their twist more so than any other American team. But after that, it was just rough. She had a hard fall on the triple toe. They had a double axle, double salcal, double axle combination. Then she had a fall on the throw flip and on the throw loop. It, you know, funny because this team is, they're known for their lifts, but in their free skate this year, I, I've, I've said a couple of times during the season that their lifts don't, just don't seem as exciting in this free skate as they did in their Marvel free skate. And as I was sort of paying a bit more attention in this competition, it's like two of the lifts that they do her position in the air looks so similar because it's just like, she's catching her foot. looks kind of like a, like a herky. If you played, <laughs> if you ever did cheerleading. And so she has two, two lifts that while they have different entries, you know, they end up looking very similar because she does that same catch foot position. And so the only one that really stands out of course, is that last one, which they got great scores on it at us nationals, but yet again, internationally somehow is not the highest lift in the competition. And I do not understand why. So again, beginning was great, end was great, and the middle was just a mess. And so hopefully we'll see a better version of them at Worlds. And at 10th place here was Zhang and Yang. And this team to me is just, I don't know if they're well matched or not, to be perfectly honest, because he is just such a performer and she just gives you absolutely nothing most of the time. It's just a blank face. It's like Steven Gogolev almost in the face. Like, does she want to be there? Is she scared? Is she happy? I don't know. She only has one facial expression. So in her short program, she did a double toe instead of a triple toe. And from what I could tell, there was really no attempt to do a triple. Their side-by-side spins were way off sync. And you could see him like try to slow down and match her. And it just never worked. It just never really got it together per usual with the Chinese, the throw was great. I love their costumes in this as well. Just my notes. She needs more performance. Long program. She falls out of her triple toe. They were so, so far apart on their single axle, double axle, double toe, which I believe was supposed to be two double axles. 
again, both the throws really nice, nice lifts with good speed and really nice air positions. But again, if you just watch them, he just even does more with his arm movements than what she's doing. And then unfortunately, towards the end of the program, their reverse group five lift, when they went to change position, the lift came down. Fortunately for them, they did get a base level on the lift. So they it didn't lose the lift completely because they did establish one position, but that did affect their scores. And she just always looks like she's scared to death. It's just, I comp- I'm pretty sure I complained about it at last year's Four Continents, the same thing, and definitely haven't seen any improvement over that from year to year. In 11th place here was Gomez and Corazon from the Philippines. I preferred their short program over the long program. In the short, I really liked the music. She had a lot of fire in that. Landed their triple sow. I was like, okay, great. Unfortunately, it was a full downgrade, so they only get credit for a double. But I thought in just in general, while they had low levels and that really affected their score, and they I think they ended up sub 50. I really thought they, they had a nice level of performance in the short program. In the long program, I just did not feel like they gave nearly as much performance in this particular program as they did in the short. And it's interesting because they have some really good elements and some really rather poor elements. So like, for instance, their twist, the height they get on it is just insane, but it's only a level two. So even with all the height, just missing features that would be able to get them some more points. Uh, she stepped out of her triple sow, and even though she landed a clean double axle, both the triple sow and the double axle ended up with full downgrades. So something in her jump technique is making her land less than three quarters of a revolution all the way, which again is a lot of points left on the table. And again, I didn't feel like that they were giving near the performance. And so obviously that also affects the second mark. So I think there's a lot to like about this team and I really enjoyed them last year as well. And they're a team we don't get to see a whole lot because they're not at Grand Prix, but there's definitely a lot that they need to work on if they would like to sort of make that next step. And 12th place was Wang and Ju of China. They were the third Chinese team that was here. They finished 11th in the short program, but unfortunately had a really rough free skate, only 85 points in their free skate. And so they ended up 12th overall. So in the short program, they had some really nice triple toes, low catch on the triple twist, nailed the triple loop, And they had only a 53.66 in the short program, which to me just seemed really low. 23 in PCS is just like, I mean, you couldn't give them a 25. (laughs) I mean, it just seemed really, really rough. What I will say is they were vastly improved here for what we saw of them at Cup of China. So at Cup of China, six of their eight elements got negative GOE. So just a lot of red on their ledger at Cup of China here Only the twist and the side-by-side spins got negative GOE. So really great improvements from them. Technically, obviously, the judges didn't give them a lot of love in the PCS department. Unfortunately, in the long program, just a really, really tough time. They started off the program with nice triple toe, double toes. Once again, got negative GOE on their twist. They do the, you know, my favorite side-by-side double sow cows and did both throws back-to-back, which is an interesting strategy, fell on the triple loop. The triple sow cow was done well, but it's, it's, to me, it's really hard to have a lot of performance when you have so many technical elements just back to back to back, because it starts to feel like you're just trying to get all the the elements out of the way. And that's all we're watching. It's just an element fest. We're not really watching a program until you decide to check in once all of your elements are done. And then the other part of that too, is in If the elements aren't done well, then it's really, really hard to even check in to what what you're giving us, which is already very little performance. So I think she has a hard time extending her legs and their lifts. They have very slow exit, and at times they just look rather awkward. Um, They have negative GOE on their spins. They even got a negative GOE on their choreo sequence, which I thought was just me. I mean... They didn't fall like there was there wasn't a slip that I saw. I mean, I just I didn't get that. They do need 
a lot more speed and they need more flow. And unfortunately, the long program wasn't stronger than their long program at Cup of China. So they had, you know, maybe two steps forward in the short program and then maybe two steps back or one step forward and two steps back, whatever the cliche is. <laughs> All right. Well, that completes the pairs event at Four Continents. And I feel like for the second week in a row, I'm, I'm feeling very underwhelmed with the pairs, but we've still got Challenge Cup coming up, or we've got all three Italian pairs there and Mira and Kihara in their second event of the season. And we've still got Worlds. So I'm still very, very hopeful that we're going to end the season on a high note, even though the season in general has been up and down with pairs. All right. So I will be back with more recaps from Four Continents. Thank you always for listening to the podcast. You can find me on all the socials at Ice Skate Podcast. Hope you're having a good rest of your week. And then the 12th place team here was the third Chinese pair, and that was Wang and Zhu. And unfortunately for them, they I feel like there's always like one team in the pairs in the dance event that the judges just like to pick on. And for them, it was Wang and Zhu in this competition because six of their eight elements in the short program got negative GOE. Um, I'm sorry, that is not correct. At, at Cup of China, six of their eight elements in the short program got negative GOE. So it was actually much improved here at this competition because I think they only had like, three elements and that got negative GOE. So they had some really nice triple toes. Same thing that we've seen a lot in this competition, low catch on their twist, nailed the throw triple loop. I thought that their 53 score seemed low. They only got a 23 in PCS, which again, really rough. Now there's not a lot going on in the program, but 